And we're back with some more RimWorld. And today we're going to be trying to flesh out the last of our problems. Uh, one of them being, oh, you'll see that our little pawns here don't like sleeping on the ground. They don't like that at all. They also don't like sleeping in an awful bedroom. So if I can get rid of two of those, that's a, a minus eight negative gone out. Also, the heat, how is it too hot in here? What's the temperature? 26. Okay, you know what? We'll put in some cooling just to make them feel all better. So we'll just throw in a passive cooler in the middle of the room. Passive coolers are effectively powered by wood, so I'm not sure how exactly they work, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to question it. Furniture-wise, we're going to want to put in bedrolls. Uh, you'll see when you click on it, you get these multiple options of what to build it out of. So if we say select, uh, was it birdskin? Birdskin bedrolls? It turns out we do have enough. You can check up here what you've got at the top. And for bedrolls, it doesn't really matter what material you make them out of, to be honest. I've, I've checked into this, and as best as I can tell, no matter what you make them out of, it doesn't improve the, the benefits of them. The benefits of some beds are they provide better sleep bonuses, so your pawns won't need to spend as long in bed. Currently, these sleeping on the dirt, not so good. Once we get in a couple of these, though, it'll improve their comfort. It will stop them having that sleeping on the ground debuff. And as well as that, these things do add a level of beauty and wealth to an area, so they should hopefully bring the rooms up above awful to just dull. Well, we'll see what happens. Oh, and we're also going to put in a fueled cooking stove right there. That's made out of iron, and that iron we're going to get from... Over here, I didn't even mine it, I think. It fell out of the sky in a couple of ships, and now it fell over here somewhere where I think we're going to harvest it up. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to have that steel... Oh, sorry, steel, not iron. I'm going to have that steel collected and brought over here. Just coming up on morning, Randy Random has given us some cargo pods. Let's see what they contain. Ooh, plasteel. Excellent. That's a very valuable material, one we are going to sell as soon as we conveniently can. You know what? Let's check something. How are we doing on wildlife? Ooh, ooh, wait, no. Let's try animals. Yeah, we still have not managed to tame anything. These are our starting critters. This here is your faction name, and it's what your mm, save game will also be named after, and what your faction will always be called. This here is your settlement name. This settlement here, uh, this settlement is only going to be temporary, so we don't really care what it's called, and we'll leave it as the Green Lagoon, but the faction name, that follows us. So we're uh, the Wicks. The Mr. Wicks. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Anyway, we have... Oh, I don't know if you saw that there, but that dog just ate meat. Uh, dogs, animals, boars, all these things, they can live off this meat, which is great for us. Uh, another thing I've started doing is we're going to start harvesting berries. There are wild berries on this map, and this is going to bring us into even more food territory that needs to be covered. First off, zoom out all the way and just double click on one berry bush, and you'll see all of the ones that are around there. Hit H to harvest, or you can click this button, one or the other. And you're probably going to go around and get the entire map. This is a little bit of a time consuming. There is a, an app out there, a, a mod that allows you to do this. It's called Select All. However, I tried using that on you know some of my test playthroughs and it's just, it, it selects too much. For example, if I was to queue up, say there was some steel or something around here. Yeah, here we go. There's some uh, compacted steel. If I said uh, mine compacted steel and hit the select all mod it would select all the steel here plus all the steel behind it plus if there was any steel hidden inside here it would also select that I find that a little bit it just it reveals stuff it shouldn't which I kind of find not perfect anyway uh, for storage here we're also going to add all of that uh, that raw food we're about to get we're about to get a bunch of berries so these berries we want to be stored here it's already set up thankfully and so our pawn should go off and get that and bring the berries back oh we already have some. Perfect. So, here we have an example of a simple meal. Simple meals were already in. We've covered this in the last video. But simple meals can be made out of one of two things. Meat or vegetables. So, in this instance, berries or the meat we've got from the animals. We can make it out of either or. It really doesn't make a difference. Now, vegetables are not going to be that common on this map. I have not planted any. So, I just want to make my normal meals out of meat because I'm going to have lots of that. The vegetables, or the berries in this case... I'm going to use to make something else. We're going to add another task here, and we're going to queue up pemmican, which is going to be a make forever sort of project. We are going to limit it so it only draws ingredients from the nearby area. We don't want our uh, pawn running halfway across the map to pick up five berries from somewhere and bring them back. And pemmican, however, requires two things. It requires nutrition from meat and nutrition from vegetarians. So you see this here? It also requires 12 work. If you look back here at Cook Simple Meal, let me look at the details of this, it only requires five work, and it goes with any raw food. So simple meals are much better. So why am I wasting my time putting so much effort into making pemmican? Well, pemmican lasts for an eternity. Uh, it'll last for about a year. You know, so 60 days. These things, these uh, little packaged meals they're eating, they last about, what, 
four cycles, that's it, or four days, it's not worth it. Now, um, I'm going to have to get my dog's body to find out what they are doing. They should be not doing nothing but constantly cooking meals for the time being. Uh, as well as that, I'm going to have to get someone to do up a uh, fuel stove. Where are you, Diggity? What are you up to? You're going to cutting a popular tree. No, you're not. You are going to be working on a fuel stove. Oh, yeah. They were trying to get rid of that. Never mind. Anyway, this fuel stove here is going to take over from this, and it should allow me to do all my cooking faster. Well, that's going on, though, let's have a quick look at these uh, beds. We've got two good beds, which is excellent. That means our constructor wasn't terrible. And you'll see here we have an immunity gain, speed factor, rest effectiveness, surgery success, work to build, blah, blah, blah. Rest effectiveness just means how quickly they regenerate their, their rest. So this is much better than sleeping on the ground. Uh, the immunity gain speed factor will cover when someone gets sick, which probably won't take too long knowing Randy. I will deconstruct you. Now, we don't have to deconstruct this. What we can do is we can reinstall at this button down here. So we just hit that and you can rotate it using the E and Q keys. It shows you down there at the bottom, right? And we're just going to line that up over there. Uh, we're probably going to rip that one out as well. And we're going to stick that one in over there. Boom. Now, once these get moved in there, this should change them from awful. See the impressiveness of the room is 19 and on the right side it says awful. Once we go above 20, I believe, it goes up into just bad or was it dull yeah once it, once we're dull we'll be better off oh there they go they just chopped that in there and they chucked that one in there and now we have two dull rooms because these rooms are dull they won't cause any negative side effects uh the needs here have awful bedroom awful gives you minus four a dull bedroom doesn't if we could get these rooms all the way up to about i think it's 30 yeah between uh, 20 to 30 is dull in the impressiveness scale in 30 to 40 you're looking at mediocre mediocre does absolutely nothing um Dull to mediocre, there's there's no benefits from doing it. Uh, you have to go above mediocre up to decent, which is about 40 impressiveness, which is, takes an awful, awful lot more effort. So getting up to just dull is not too bad. You just put down some wooden flooring, you put in a, a sleeping mat or a bed even, and you're good to go. Occasionally you won't quite make it, so just throw in a, a chair. I usually like to throw in a chair just to help it out. And that's it. Uh, later on, you're going to want to make the bedrooms bigger and more impressive, but for the time being, this early on, you're just trying to scrape by. As well as that, we're using only wood. Uh, yeah, I'm using wood at the moment because we don't even have the ability to make stone. You could use steel, though steel is not is better, but not great. We'd also have to mine it. And uh, while this all this is going on, you'll see that this pawn over here, Dog's Body, is digging di or cooking away. And slowly but surely catching up with some meals. Once they're finished catching up on the basic meals, because of the way we've arranged it. Oh, where is it now? That's turkey meat. Because the way we've arranged it, once they finish cooking 15 simple meals, they'll then switch on to making the pemmican. Now, you'll notice here, when they're coming out, they have to run all the way over to get the meat, which is pretty far away. And this is sort of time-consuming and slow. You'll see they're doing a lot of trips to get what they need. So let's do a little bit of management on that, shall we? We just select this area here. This is the zones area, and I want to shrink the zone. I want to make myself a little space. So, yeah, let's be just give us a nice big chunk of space there. And then we're going to want to make ourselves a new zone. I'm going to want to make like, two new stockpile zones. We're going to make one here, uh, say right about to there. And we'll make another one right about to there. And these two stockpile zones, we're going to set to store specifics. This one here on the left, we're going to get to store raw meat. And then what you can do is we will set that to priority preferred. And then this one over here, we're going to set that to store... Oh, clear all. We're going to set that to store raw vegetarian, so all the vegetarian stuff, which includes berries. Then what should happen is our current pawns who have uh, the job of carting around at the moment will come back in and put the specifics right there. This, though, I'm just going to expand that, expand that, put those back in. That will take a few minutes, but once someone's available to do it, they'll get around to it. Ah, here we go. No, so there's some meat left over there. This should cut down on the transfer distance this pawn has to do, so they should just come out, pick that up, move back in. This is very important. Oh, and while we're at it, here is the cooking speed of this pawn. Uh, you'll see that they've got, their cooking speed only goes up every time they complete a meal. So 3, 2, 1, 7, and until they finish cooking the meal, boom, 3, 3, 4, 6. It's very slow. Increasing cooking, ugh, painfully slow. They started at 4 and they're only at 5 right now. However, once we get this constructed, where is Diggity? You should be working on this. You should not be harvesting a... Need steel? We have more than enough steel to beat that. Where is it? You know what? I'm going to go check out where that's not working. It's just hit morning and the first pawn is up. Dog's body and Dog's body got to sleep in a dull bed. Well, in a dull bedroom with a normal bed. And if we check out their needs, they've got... 
No, oh, okay, disturb sleep. I did have to move them in the middle of the night. They've got some minor pain, but that's to do with health issues that they currently have. Uh, and unsightly environment, which uh, I can't really do much about that just yet. As you can see, they don't have the debuff for... Uh, let's check out poor MacGyver here. Uh, slept on the ground and awful bedroom. They don't have those two minus... That extra minus eight on top of them. So once they... Oh, and why did you open that door? You just opened that door, disturbed their sleep. And now they've had... Where is it? Disturbed sleep with a minus one. Thanks very much for that dog's body. Thank you very much. I have no idea why they went in there. Never mind. So, uh, I still have to move the last of these beds in and get everyone into normal beds, but after that, everyone should be quite stable and hopefully we won't have so many close calls. For example, a guy over here, not too happy right now. They are not too happy at all at all. That disturbed sleep. We did not need that. Anyway, I'll push this forward and I'm going to get uh, dogs or diggity when they wake up. Their job is going to be to complete that stove. Oh, more cargo pods. What have we got? Neutral amine. Okay, this stuff is just, it's a precursor for medicine, but it's no good without the research of medicine. You can sell it though. We can sell it. So that's one thing we can do with it. However, research wise, yeah, we can't research anything. We don't even have electricity. You can research this basic stuff, but I haven't bothered. Really, what I'm trying to do is just get stable. Uh, a lot of people will like to get in farming and research and all this stuff. I have a very different playstyle. Um, I'm not sure it's a good playstyle, but it's one I enjoy. So we're going to go with that. that. You may be wondering why I'm not farming. That will hopefully become clearer later. And oh look, there's an alpaca and a muffalo roaming around. And if we check under our animal section, we have managed to get them tamed. So we now have an alpaca and a muffalo, which will follow us around. We can't breed them yet. We need uh, multiples and stuff like that. But what we can do is we can set them up their own zone. The great thing about these critters... Wait, no, we want to expand a loud zone. Give us management. These critters can... Uh, they can be fed on vegetation. They're effectively just um, herbivores, so we can say, take this entire area here, and we shall call that area Zone 2. All our animals that are herbivores can go hang around in that area. So they'll hang out over there. We'll probably give them some sleeping spots as well. And when the time comes, we can use those as pack animals. Yeah. There you go. We'll give you plenty of uh, sleeping spots. They only need one each, but uh, I'm hope hopeful of taming a few more. So maybe my optimism is getting ahead of me. Anyway, once Stark gets out of bed, seriously, Stark, what are you doing? What, how have you been in bed that long? We're going to deconstruct their bed, which is actually just a sleeping spot on the ground. It's not really a bed so much as a location where a bed could be. And we're going to give them a normal bed. So at the end of t today, everyone will have a normal bed. Uh, oh. Deconstruct that. You see the way that's assigned to Diggity? That's because Diggity slept in already. They'll keep going back to it, even though there's a better bed available. Oh, one last thing I do want to check. You'll see here this birdskin bedroll down at the bottom left. It has a good tag after it. Uh, if we check all of these things, this one has a normal tag after it, and this one over here has a poor tag after it. This is not to do with the materials that were made from. It was to do with the crafter that crafted them. When something is crafted or created, uh, everything down from a wooden stool to a table, uh, even well, not so much the passive coolers and the walls, those ones you can't really do anything bad with. But a lot of items, they come with this uh, craftability. For example, the short bow here is normal quality. All of those weapons are all normal quality because we spawned with them. But the quality of an item has a bearing on how good it is. So this is good and it has a rest effectiveness of 103%. This means the pawns that sleep here get really good rest very fast. If we take this one here, which is poor, it has a rest effectiveness of 87%, meaning the pawn that sleeps here, it will take them longer to recover the rest. And by recover the rest, let's uh, have a look here at their needs meter. This is the rest meter here. Currently, they're all well rested, but this goes down through the day and then it recovers as they sleep. So I kind of want to scrap that poor one. I don't want that. This normal one will be okay. It's about 95%. Mm, also, it's expensive because it's a large one. I'd rather not scrap it. But I can always sell these beds. They're worth money. They're just not worth as much as the raw materials I put into them, unfortunately. Until a pawn is producing consistently good material, it's usually a bad idea to have them make stuff. You're not going to make as much money out of it. That's okay. That's for a much later date. Anyway, the qualities you can get are awful, poor, normal, good, excellent, masterwork, and finally, I think you can get legendary. But legendary requires a special event, and it's, it's really hard to do. But the differences in quality and all those things will allow you to make give you different bonuses with what you can do with the materials. So right now... I have one, that really poor bed there, that's got to go. Uh, someone's going to get that and they're just not going to get as good a sleep as they want. This one is fine. Oh, and uh, these beds here, these bedskin rolls, these are bed rolls. You can get normal wooden furniture beds. However, that will require research we don't have of complex furniture. However, 
once you get that, you can give, build wooden beds. Wooden beds are about 5% better on average. You know, uh, rest effectiveness-wise, they're 5% better on average. So if you had a good uh, wooden bed made, you know, one a piece of furniture, it would have a rest effectiveness of about 107 or 108%, somewhere around there. Just uh, one thing to be aware of. That's why furniture is also good furniture is quite nice. Anyway, uh, let's uh, skip this forward and get this completed. I finally acquired the last of the steel. I did a little bit of mining over here, and the last of that steel has been used to produce the fuel stove, which hopefully helps speed up our cooking. Now, before I replace the fireplace, a couple of things I want to do. I don't want to have to sign up all these bills and do up all the queue up all that junk again. What you can do is just go in here, grab your simple meal, and you can go under where is it? Uh, copy to clipboard. So you can take that copy button there. Once it's copied, you can go in here and there's a paste button. So you can paste that meal in. Go back in, and we also want to copy the make pemmican. Go back, paste. Boom. Now the, both of those meals are done. And if we check, say, the details here, yeah, everything's been set to the same. Uh, oh, drop on the floor. That was my bad. I didn't do that in the first one. And uh, this one, yeah, drop on the floor. So both of these are set up the exact same way now. We can deconstruct this. And then what we can do is after that's gone, we can move it in. But first things first... Don't want to forget this this time. We're going to put in a light. Uh, the reason being, once the fireplace has actually been providing the light in here, but once the stove is gone, it won't be, or once the fire is gone, it won't be providing any more light, which will be bad. But once that's done, we can uh, reinstall this here. Yeah, you'll see that chair symbol behind it. That's where the cooker is going to stand. And you can place a chair there to make their life easier. So for example, we can build a copy right here. You can also put a copy right there for the butcher's table. Boom, problem solved. Now we have a, a cooking area that's much better than before. Though I have run out of meat. That uh, It turns out that uh, Mega Slot didn't last as long as I was hoping. So I've queued up an Ibex dough. You know what? I am going to queue up a lot of them. We need to get all of this uh, berries turned into pemmican as fast as we can. Berries are pretty good though. They last, how long is it? I think it's 12 days, I want to say. 13 days, not refrigerated. We don't have access to refrigeration either. We're Neolithic. We don't even have stone for... for <laughs> For the love of all that is holy, we don't even have stone. That is how bad we are. Anyway, I think uh, I think we'll move forward a bit here. I think our, our pawns are taking a rest for the night. And here we have an example of a minor break uh, risk. Uh, these colonists are in a poor mood and may have a minor break at any time. Check these colonist needs tabs to see what it is and make them feel better, etc, etc. So this is MacGyver here, and if we check under their needs, you'll see they're quite low. They've got a lot of negatives going on here. Disturbed sleep didn't help. Wants to sleep with Stark. Minus two. I don't like sleeping apart from my partner. How did that happen? Uh, ate without table. Uncomfortable. Slept on the ground. Unsightly environment. Insulted and darkness. Well, darkness is because they're out hunting in the middle of the night. But anyway, insulted. Uh, someone insulted them. So you're wondering, how did that happen? Well, that requires you to go into the social section and you'll see they've got a... Oh, you know what? We'll go back to needs for a second. Uh, insulted. Where is it? I've been directly insulted. What an awful person. Expires in 1.5 days. And then we just go into social here and we can see, was it Rambo openly insulted MacGyver's hardiness? <laughs> so effectively, Rambo here told MacGyver that he was a wimp and this has put him in a bad mood and now their, their acquaintance level has gone to minus 13. So he has a minus 13 opinion of Rambo and doesn't like him. Yeah, that's not going to get much better. There's things you can do to fix it, but uh, yeah, not yet. Not quite yet. Oh, one that's going on. What is that? Oh, sandstone wall. Hmm. So I'm going to have to make sure these are assigned to the correct beds because it seems they're already angry about not being in there. There we go. MacGyver and Stark are assigned to the same bed. They slept in the same one last night, so I don't even know why they're getting uncomfortable about that. Uh, opinion of my wife. Uh, got me some loving. Okay, that's helped out. Yeah, we really better get that person into it. I can't wait until they go to sleep tonight. That should hopefully wipe out most of the negatives they're currently experiencing. Anyway. Mad squirrels. Okay, Randy. Randy, 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 what have you got for us today? A mad squirrel. Yep, that is a mad squirrel, all right. However, there is only one of them, and they're right beside more diggity. That is just... You know what? Let's get everyone on the clock and get them all over here. Now, I have done things before where I have underestimated the power of mad critters. I have been mauled by squirrels before, and I've sent one or two people to deal with it, and next thing you know, everything went badly wrong. So I have learned to overreact consistently to everything. Uh, you are going to stop right there. You are going to stop right there. Oh, there's two mad squirrels. That's not good. Uh, wait, three mad squirrels? Oh my god, there's mad squirrels everywhere. 
Randy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know what? Just, uh, I want you to melee that squirrel. I want you to punch that squirrel right in its squirrel face. No, no, no. Hold fire. Hold fire. <laughs> we don't want any friendly fire going on here. You two, yeah, you can melee that as well. I, I want everyone to gang up on that squirrel. I want it punched punched in its squirrel face as hard as you possibly can. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, that that's why you always overreact, just in case. Now, colonists need treatment. We've got Diggity here. Diggity here took some injuries from the squirrel. We have bites from squirrel teeth, scratch from squirrel paw. Yeah, they're, they're going straight to bed. I understand. That's perfectly fine. Oh, and waste not, want not. Let's uh, add those squirrels to our collection of uh, edibles. They'll make fine meals. Fine meals, I tell you. So, Diggity here, thankfully, was not someone we cared about too much. Wait, no, that's wrong. Um... Skills-wise, we didn't care about too much. They're mining, and mining is an ancillary skill. We don't need too much mining right now. We're more worried about getting food up and other things, so them having to sleep in bed, not just fine. We do want to make sure they get some medical treatment, though. If they don't get some medical treatment, these blood symbols will cause them to bleed out in 10 hours from a squirrel. Our best doctor is Dog's Body, uh, or that's the one I've decided to use, one way or the other. What's their uh, bio on doctoring? Their medical is six. Ooh, excellent. So we're going to prioritize tending to this person. Wouldn't mind. You are going to prioritize feeding. Oh, wait, no, that's reserved by Dog's Body. Never mind. So Dog's Body is going to take really, really good care of them and make sure that they don't bleed out. And you'll see... Let's see if I can zoom in a bit more. You'll see this progress bar going down below. That means they're tending to their wound. And then as they do it, this gets X'd off. It stops the bleeding. The more you stop the bleeding, the less likely they are to... Well, once you've stopped all the bleeding, they won't have any problems anymore. They won't, you know, be on the risk of dying. Uh, summer. Summer has begun, but winter is coming. Grow your food, etc. Yeah, this is just the warning that uh, spring is coming to an end and we're into the summer, summer month. You can see it down here. Uh, I need to cook up all the food I can and then we're going to leave this place. Before we did get a chance to get out of here, I've been <laughs> I've been trying to just tidy up and uh, we were going to go mega slot hunting. We've experienced a heat wave. Heat waves can kill quickly if they, people get heat stroke, stay cool by building a cooler or getting deep under a mountain. Simplest thing to do here, we want to go into temperature and we want to grab passive cooler. We already have one, but we're going to stick down two more. These things are cheap and all they cost is wood, which is rather plentiful on this map biome type. It's one of the reasons you stay in, uh, or it's good to go to the temperate area. It's full of trees. And trees are very helpful when you're trying to do lots of little construction jobs. Especially when you don't have access to, like, our tribe just does not have access to stone, which means wood is our only real choice. Anyway, a few coolers in there, that should solve any problems and we shouldn't have any overheating. If we check, uh, if you look down in there in the bottom right, you can see the temperature indoors is 23 degrees. Once we get the coolers, um, it's so hot outside, which is what, 34, that it's kind of overpowering the, the single cooler a bit. Once we've got two coolers in, I believe it drops to about 15 C. Uh, another downside to this heat wave is all the critters on the map are going to evacuate. They're all going to run away. They don't like hanging around in a, an overheated area. So it's a good idea right now to maybe grab a few people and go get some uh, some meat right now so that we can convert the last of these berries. How many berries we got left? 160. Yeah, so we're going to grab a few pawns. For now, we're just going to grab MacGyver, Stark, and Diggity. Uh, we're going to go hunting a mega sloth. Uh, the reason I'm grabbing these three is because, fortunately, Rambo is a little bit hungry at the moment. And because Rambo is hungry, I'm going to let them finish getting their food. Once they get some food into them, which is done already, they're going to join up with us. Then, hopefully going to get this critter, and without it, going absolutely berserk. That would be unfortunate. Oh, no. That's one of the annoying things. You can't tell them to just move closer to a critter and keep attacking it. <sighs> Very frustrating. You have to actually manually get them in range of everything. So, that's one down. We're going to take these three, though. Uh, we're going to let Stark there continue to, well... Finish it off. We don't want it uh, coming back. We don't want it recovering for any means. Actually, what's the health on that? It will bleed out in six hours. You know what? We can just ignore it then. Eventually, it will be ours one way or the other. Then we're going to go up here and take out another one. Like I said, we got to take advantage of all this. we got to take advantage of the meat while we got the chance. So you shoot there. Oh, come on. Stop running away. Stand there and take your arrows. Oh, and there, Mega Sloth Revenge. The Sloth got angry at us, shooting at us, and sh uh, at us shooting at them, and they tried to come back and uh, do some damage to us. It happens. It's going to try occasionally, but it's a good idea to um, 
That's why it's a good idea to bring four at a time. If that was only one person there, that would not have been good. That would not have been good at all. And that will pass naturally in about five hours, which is perfect for us. You take out that. Oh, I may have been too close. I'm too close. Uh, we're going to slow the game down to that speed. You get out of the way. Yeah, you are also going to want to get out of the way. You also want to get out of the way. Yeah, this is why things always get dangerous. Ooh, okay, okay, we're going to allow that. And looks like Diggity is going back to bed. Oh, wait, no. They managed to avoid getting hit. Thank you, Randy. Okay. Um, that worked out surprisingly. How did you get back up? You, you were going to bleed out in four hours. Are you still going to bleed out in four hours? Uh, let's hope so. And there was another one down here somewhere. Yep, that one's still got three hours left. You know what? It's fine. We've got plenty of meat. This will keep us going for a long time to come. Oh, and uh, I've cut this one around going around. This pawn is going around mining out all the compacted machinery on the map. It's very valuable and we're going to use that to sell it to hopefully buy some things that will help our colony survive a bit longer. Once we've got all the mega slots harvested and we've turned some of it into pemmican, we're going to uh, call it quits and leave this map. We can go onto the world map. Uh, first time we bring up the world map, it'll take a while to generate, but yeah, this is where we are and this is the local trading settlements nearby and we're going to pick up our entire operation and we're going to move. But not just yet. While I was busy clearing out any of the wildlife that was sticking around, as you can see, they're all starting to evacuate as quickly as they can. But I was—I uh, decided to clear out as many wild boars. I took some risks. It happens. Uh, I've had one turn against me and one of my, I think Rambo took a little bit of a few scratches, but it happens. We also got a crashed drop pod from Randy and we have a potential new colonist. Uh, the potential new colonist has about five hours to live, but they do have some good stuff going on for them. One, they've got good shooting and melee skills, so they could become quite a decent fighter. However, they suck at everything else. The only other thing they can do is animals. They're okay at that. Also, they hate and really distrust and dislike men, but eh, I'm not really going to care too much about that. I'll just make them slightly more abrasive and harder to deal with, but I think we're going to rescue them. I th think, yeah, uh, why not? They can. We can add them to our colony. Now, to do that, the uh, simplest thing to do is, who is our best cook? Oh, no, I don't want to get Dog's body to do it. Let's see, rescue Lumpy. Well, we can capture them either, and we could, you know, get into the business of the bad stuff, like selling people for money, which, you know, generally pretty bad. Uh, we could just strip them so we could take their clothing and just leave them to die, or we could rescue them. I think we're going to rescue them. They're a fighter, but they've no other purpose but really to fight. Uh, oh, actually, let me double-check one thing under uh, bio. There's nothing stopping them from doing um, dumb labor. Dumb labor is cleaning and hauling, which is always got a purpose, so they can do that. You can see their backstory here. They're a vat grown soldier. They're good at shooting in melee, but this, this vat grown soldier stat, which gives them a bonus to shooting in melee, disables doctoring and wardening. Their adult hilt was as a sailor, which has effectively disabled pretty much everything else they could possibly do. So the only thing they can do is shoot melee and animals, and they've got a, a little bit of an artistic, but no one cares. Uh, oh, one wonderful trait they have, which is really nice, is they have ascetic. Ascetics prefer bad rooms, which is great. Oh, uh, though we may not be able to keep them alive. They've got five hours to survive, and I don't think we can, we may not be able to get them enough medical care in time. Uh, we'll see what happens. We can see here that they've got one hour left, and I've got Dog's body here, and I've prioritized attending to Lumpy, so they'll, they, I've had to wake them up. Otherwise, this person will not survive. They've got one hour left to live, and... Oh. Yeah, a little bit of attending. I don't think that's going to be enough. I didn't bring all... Uh, I haven't centralized all the medicine. I re How did I not do that? Uh, medicine. Oh yeah, I just centralized that recently, so all the medicine was left out on the map. So that pawn had to run around. Oh, come on. Seriously? Mad hair. Okay, let's jump to location. How many mad hairs are we going to have to deal with today? Oh, there's two hairs. Just two hairs? Just one of them is mad, though. Regular hair. Mad. Maddened man hunter. Regular hair. Maddened man hunter. Rambo, you know what? I am going to trust you to take care of this problem for us. And one hit, he tagged it, and second hit, they're going to get into a um, 50 cuffs. And yeah, see that's it, look, a bite, one bite, 
and now they've got to get uh, medical care. Ah. That's why you, wild woman wanders in. Okay, Randy, you're just throwing them all at me today. Wild, uh, wild person. Wild people can show up occasionally, and they're effectively like this. They're, they're like critters more than anything else. You can't go along and just tame them. Uh, you can't just go along and grab them and get to convince them to join your colony. They're wild. They're effectively, you know, feral. So the way you get them is you get your mm, your critter wrangler or your critter tamer. Uh, in this instance, I believe it was. I want to say Stark. I think Stark is our critter tamer. Let's see. Stark animals. Yeah. So Stark is our critter tamer. And you would assign Jaguar to be tamed so that you can tame them and bring them in. Another thing you can do is you can get your, one of your pawns and you can try to arrest them and, you know, show them into a cell. That's if you want to say keep them for other less uh, reasonable purposes. But let's have a quick look at their bio and see if they're worth it. Oh, wait. No. Pyromaniac. Pyromaniac. Never, ever, 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 ever hire a py pyromaniac. You know what? We are just going to, you know, let them do what they want to do. Oh my God, you can hunt them? That's just not, that That shouldn't be allowed. And anyway, we're going to let them wander through. We don't really care. They can do whatever they're going to do. Oh, uh, this m green stuff down here is jade. Very valuable. We're going to be using that to sell. And I think I'm going to butcher all these animals and then leave. Uh, I think we've got enough. So you can go around and you can harvest out everything, but there's this other mechanic in this game. And one that will... Well, it's normally what gets everyone. It's the wealth mechanic. The more wealth you have, the bigger the raids you can come under and the larger the nastier the problems you will encounter. So what's going on here is we've started to accumulate more and more wealth because we've been collecting jade. We've also been collecting some components. Uh, we've also got lots of furs, pemmican, food, and all of the stuff. Everything on the map is classified as their wealth. Even the critters we've tamed, they're classified as wealth also. Uh, that extra pawn we've just adopted, they're also classified as more wealth. So the richer we get, the more likely we are to experience b bigger and bigger raids. So I've got enough resources now that I want to go out onto the world, do some trading, and get ourselves some weapons to defend against the bigger raids we are going to encounter in the future. While well, busy doing a complete uh, evolution of all the animals on the map, uh, some dromedaries joined us, which is great. Uh, how many? Two? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, welcome, welcome to the parties. Uh, that means we can go to animals here and we will just assign them out to the um, area too. As well as that, there's one male, one female, so they can breed and we can hopefully end up with more camels at a later date. I think, in fact, in terms of wildlife, we've got... Oh, but no, in animals, we've got... Yeah, no, two male alpacas uh, and... Ah, one male, two female muffalo. So we'll end up with more muffalo and more dromedaries without even trying. Uh, once... I think once today is over and we've changed all of these critters into meat. Tomorrow morning it's time to pack everything up and leave. We're going to take everything we've gotten. Ooh, milk. Yeah, I gotta start... Hmm, I gotta start putting everything in one place. When it comes to animals, some of them can be milked. So, uh, I believe it's the muffalos can be milked. The alpacas can be sheared for wool and dromedaries can... I th oh, wait, no. Muffalo can be milked and sheared for wool. Uh, the alpacas can be sheared for wool and the dromedaries can be milked and sheared for wool. However... You get more, way more wool out of alpacas than you would uh, the other critters. These things take longer to grow their coats back. But the milk is useful. It's technically classified as meat, so you can combine milk and vegetables, I believe, together to get... Uh, milk and vegetables together to get uh, standard meals and stuff like that, or pemmican. Anyway, uh, what we want to do is change this so that we store some of this stuff that's out here. So we want to change it so we can get all the uh, the milk and animal pack animal products. Ah, here we are. Animal produce. Eggs, insect jelly, milk, all this. There's there's a lot of stuff that's going to be available on the map at some point or another. I want to put together a nice caravan in the morning and get everyone out of here. It's a little bit of a chore, so I want everyone to be asleep pretty much around the same time so that they all wake up around the same time. And that brings us into the restrict settings. And what we can do here is we can set everyone to go, hey, I would like everyone to really try and get to sleep right now if you possibly could. And we'll just copy that over to everyone. This means if anyone's even vaguely sleepy, they'll go and grab their sleep right now. Okay, there we go. And who's missing? Someone's not asleep. Diggity, where are you? Oh, they're coming back. They, they were off mining somewhere like a, like a good champ. Anyway, when morning time comes, we'll pack up and get out of here. Uh, first thing, you're going to go into the miscellaneous section, and we're going to make a caravan parking spot. Uh, caravan parking spot. We're going to make it right about there. And we also want our critters to be able to come over. These animals need to be getting, able to get over there so that we can, well load them up with goods so we'll just yeah there now everything overlaps at that point they can move over there and help out Ooh, ambrosia sprout now this is something that happens but 
We can't really take advantage of it. We're leaving right now. But I can show you how to take care of these if you do encounter them in the future. This is a growing zone. I have not used these because I'm playing a, a playthrough where I don't plant any crops, which is a stupid and silly idea and you should not do that. But I'm, it's just, I'm having fun doing it. Anyway, um, we are going to put a grow zone over this. However, the moment the grow zone is down, we're going to select it and we are going to say, uh, don't allow sowing. We're going to cross it out. What would normally happen is here, we've selected potatoes, or potatoes are the default one. Potatoes would be planted here and everything else would be stripped out. But since we're not going to plant any potatoes, all that will happen is our ponds will come over, they'll remove the trees and, well, no, they'll harvest the trees when the trees come of age. They'll only harvest stuff in here when it's of age. So they'll wait until these ambrosia bushes are ready to be harvested and then they'll come harvest them. But at the same time, this has expanded our home zone. This is something I've not covered. You'll notice here we have home zone areas. This is where we have to place stuff. Um, for example, there's a stockpile over here I put for getting rid of uh, chunks of rock. I set this to only store uh, chunks. So stone, granite, marble, and then I put it at the lowest priority possible and I just used that to get rid of all of the chunks that were around some of my areas that I didn't want them taking up space. All of these areas, though, they all have a home zone to them and home zones are important. If there's a fire in any of these areas, our pawns will go along and put it out. If there's a fire here, they won't care. If the fire is one tile inside here, they'll start caring. So you can expand and contract your home zones. I don't want my pawns coming over here and sweeping this place up. They'll also, you know, sweep th sweep and clean things. So let's just get rid of that. There we go. That should mean if we were staying here on that map, when the ambrosia is ready to be harvested, our pawns would go do it. There's no way to really grow ambrosia any other way manually. It's morning time, everyone's awake. Oh, that reminds me, I should change this so it's back to a more normal schedule. Uh, yeah, instead of putting it back to the way it was, I'm just going to make this, uh, what should I call it, anything. In other words, the pawns will do what they want, when they want. If they're hungry, they'll eat. If they need to get recreation, they'll go get it. Well, in theory, we'll see how this works out. Now we've got everyone done, everything's in place. Oh, uh, yeah, the pawn I tried to rescue didn't quite make it, unfortunately. We didn't get them tended to in time. They weren't a great pawn, they were just good at fighting, and that's pretty much... If they don't have good fighting skills, I'm not interested in them at the moment, just due to the way the wealth system works. Anyway, once we got them uh, disposed of, what I want to do is start this caravan. We want to get everyone mounted up and out of here. So, how do you start a caravan? World map. Then we want to go and click on our settlement, and then you can see form caravan. This gives us a list of everything we have, and it gives us mass, so let's see... We'll select our five pawns, and that gives us 175 kilos of carry capacity. Each pawn has a carry capacity of 35 kilos. Of course, you see the way it's two of 35? That's because that pawn is wearing some stuff and carrying weaponry and things, and those all add weight to the pawn. Now we can include the, where is it, the dogs? Yeah, the two dogs, and where is the boar? And you'll notice they do nothing. Our carry capacity remains the same, but if we show them a muffalo, oh look, our carry capacity went up, and look, we keep going, and now our capacity is 606 kilos. Uh, of course, that did, did that I don't think it changed our movement tile, movement speed. That hasn't changed at all, adding in the animals. We're just moving at the speed of the slowest critters, pretty much. Now it's time to stock up. This is where we decide what we're going to bring with us, and it's going to be very simple. Pretty much everything. And done. Everything collected up. The only thing we're really missing is I'm leaving the wood behind. I'm going to come back here, at least temporarily, before I, I, we go on and settle somewhere else. So I think I'll leave the wood behind just for now. Now we have to choose our route, and we're going to want to go to the closest place, which is there. It'll take point, 0 0.14 days. We're right beside a road, so this should be very quick. And then we hit accept. Uh, yeah, large part of the caravan's food will rot sooner. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure, because it's going to take point 0.14 days. Very little of it will rot, theoretically. Now, it doesn't just magically collect them all together. All the pawns have to go and collect all the stuff you've selected and bring them to one spot. Now, we selected our caravan spot as being over here. So all the animals and all the people should go over there and congregate in that area. We'll just fast forward this a bit. As you can see, they're collecting everything up. Oh! Damn it, I forgot one thing. One second. I forgot to remove the beds. We need to bring the beds with us so we have something to sleep on, otherwise it's very uncomfortable for our pawns. Um, actually, wait a minute. No, this is a really short trip, so I'll leave them behind. Realistically, I shouldn't do this. Realistically, I should take them with me everywhere I go. But this is going to be a very short journey unless something goes horrifically wrong. So we'll just let this play out. As you can see, they've collected up everything, then they head off to the edge of the map, and poof, they vanish. That's because they've got onto the world map here. Then they will travel across here and head towards the latest place. Uh, we have been ambushed by a group of two pirates from the Tomahawk Men. They will attack you unless you give them Megaslot meat, pork, Nutrimi. 
Yeah, that that's not going to happen. We're going to fight. Mm, at least you get some... Uh, let's see, what have we got here? Yeah, the combat in this game is a bit... Uh, it's simplistic, but brutal and fast. What we want to do is we don't even care about getting cover. We don't need to care about that. We can cover... Co yeah, we can cover cover at a later date, I suppose, is what, we, what I'm trying to say. All we're going to do is make a firing line. And we're going to stretch everyone out in a line. And then we're going to have the enemy attack us and they will just run into a stream of arrows. One last thing I should cover, I should more than likely get my animals out of the way. That would be a good idea. This is something you just need to get used to doing. I, of course, keep forgetting. I will call this area one. Yeah, we're going to do that there. And then we get all our animals and say, animals, would you please all get into area one, the whole lot of you. I don't want them getting caught in the crossfire. There's five of you. How can you all miss? Oh, there we go. Tagged. Okay, they're down to, well, not good health. That's one down. Second one is going to, oh, they're literally going to run away. Let's have a quick check and see if they're any good or worth keeping. Oh, this one has depressive, a minus 12, a permanent minus 12 to their mood. They're also too smart, which gives them a mental break threshold of plus 12%. They would be impossible to keep happy. Yes, we're going to let them run away. That's fine. This one over here, also depressive. Oh, oh wow. It's a depressive neurotic. <laughs> We've got a depressive too smart. Yeah, um, it was good. Good fun meeting you guys. We're going to leave you all behind. Oh, one thing you can search through here, and if you want, you can hang around and do some mining if needs be, though by and large, these maps are smaller than your normal maps, and they usually don't have anything too worthwhile. There might be some wildlife we could go after, but uh, you know what? We're on the clock. Let's get out of here and reform the caravan. Reform caravan, and it, uh, it prompts you to take things with you. For example, we could take Nate here with us if we wanted. Yeah, we, we, we don't want... And you could also take some marble chunks, even the steel knife that was dropped on the ground. You know what? Yeah, we'll take that steel knife for this. We can always sell that. And then the caravan is reformed, and off we go again. As you head towards the town, eventually that will pop up. It won't pause the game. I had to do that manually, but it will bring this up. Rambo's caravan has arrived at Clown's Bush. We jump to that location, and then we can hit the trade button. And this is where things get interesting. This is where we can trade away all the stuff we've accumulated during our time. We can even trade away the animals that we have. So we could trade away the muffalos, things like that. And they're worth quite a decent chunk of change. For selling here, we want to sell all that meat we brought with us. That hair meat, mega slot meat, uh, pork. All of that is worth 1600 That's an awful lot of money in this game. I know we haven't really covered money in this, but yeah, that that's going to severely bump up our funds, though we're not going to keep it because we're going to have to sell it off. So we get 1600 from just from the meat, another 300 from that Nutramine that came out of a cargo drop pod. Components-wise, at 1900, that's another 700 just from components. Components are quite valuable, and weight, weight ratio-wise, they've turned out to be very handy. So we got 2600, and now let's sell off all our uh, furs. Uh, blue fur and heavy hunt. There is an extra 1000 on top of that. Uh, steel, yeah, we don't care about that, but let's see, how much is it worth? I was curious. Not even worth it. You know what? We'll keep the steel. Uh, actually, no. We came this far. We might as well get rid of Jade. At 800. So it was worth about three or 400. Uh, worth carrying around. And the Plasteel. Also worth it. Um, there's Weapons are not really worth it. Weapons get a minus 20. Or was it a 20% modifier? You only get 20% of the cost of a weapon. So they're expensive to buy. But to sell them, you don't really make much money. So we're going to sell all of those. That brings us up to four grand. Now you'll notice their money here is only this. This is how much money they have on them. So I have to buy a bunch of junk off them. And let me do a quick check. Unfortunately, all this place has is, well, terrible stuff. I picked up a wooden statue just because I wanted one. A steel helmet, uh, a couple of flak, flak pants. We've got, oh, well, actually flak pants normal. You know what? We'll take a few of you. So we've got a couple of flak pants. Three flak pants? Oh, they have lots of flak pants. One second. Five pairs of flak pants. Normal. They would help. I would prefer if they had flak vests, not flak jackets, but uh, they don't. Uh, a cloth duster, just to keep someone warm. A couple of machine pistols, because they don't have any decent weaponry, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, one cloth duster. That's about it. I'm going to have to take some of our stuff back, because, unfortunately, they don't have enough money to pay us the rest of the silver. I took back the components, and I also grabbed five regular medicine. Medicine is quite handy. There's some Glitter World stuff here, but, yeah, I don't want to... We're not going to be spending that much just yet. Uh, we just hit the accept trade. 
And you know what? Let's see what it's like to visit here. How long will that take? And it's going to take, yeah, 0 0.1 days. You know what? Let's go have a quick gander over there and see if they've got anything we can use. This place has turned out to be even worse than the last. Uh, they do have a couple of pawns you can potentially buy. They effectively become instant members of your colony, but yeah, they're pretty terrible. This one can't do dumb labor and the other one has uh, is depressive or something like that. They're just, they're not worth it. In terms of weapons, which is what I was mainly here for, they've got a machine pistol and an auto pistol and a couple of weapons that are not really going to be very much used to us. The triple rocket launcher is a single use, so that's not what we want. I would like the EMP grenades, but maybe not just yet. I picked up some clot dusters as well, uh, so we're looking pretty good on some clot duster front, but I still haven't found a single flak vest. Anyway, we will accept all of that. We'll come out a little bit ahead in all this trading, but now it's time to uh, return home. Still, all in all, not the worst, but I think next trade trip I'm going to have to start going to somewhere else. These two places are terrible. I'm going to return back home, park up for the night, and we should be good to go. Once you do get home, your pawns will uh, come in off the edge of the map and settle back into base and dump everything off. Oh, that reminds me, I should uh, kit everyone out in the gear they require. Uh, the next morning, uh, all of these pack animals get un unloaded after a while, and when they do, all the stuff is brought in here. So I'm getting everyone hooked up with, uh, well, the proper weaponry. For example, let's see, Rambo here is now equipped with a cloth duster and some flak pants, though I might want to get him a shirt. Uh, they took off, they have to take off their little onesie tribal, for, cloth tribal wares uh, when they put on flak pants, and everyone now has access to flak pants, which is... Oh, uh, yeah, I probably should have got someone some other stuff, because, yeah, they're going to... Yep. So the woman here has put on flak pants, but she can't wear her onesie with that, so that means she can't, uh, she doesn't have a top on, and that's giving her a debuff for being naked. <laughs> okay, yeah, I've got over 40 minutes of footage here, I'm going to cut this out here, but uh, yeah, we're going to have to do a few changes to that, uh, get some more resources. I was really hoping we could get some better weaponry on our townships, we should have at least got an assault rifle or two, or maybe even a minigun, but unfortunately we're stuck with some uh, machine pistols. They will be quite useful though for capturing people, but uh, that's for the next episode. I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.